So um, probably heard by now that you just put a book out. It's been out there the, um, since April 30th, Walpurgis Night. I uh, just finished it, and I'm really impressed. I, I really am, Thomas. Um, you bring history alive with this storytelling style, and you, bring, you keep bringing it back around to different dates, and it's so well-researched that it, it really flows. And for those of us who have experienced evil in our lives and know that it's evil and can name it as evil, history doesn't come alive for us because of those who are the storytellers of history out there in the world won't touch this stuff with a 10-foot pole. They're too scared. And, like, academia won't touch it, um, the occult stuff, and just naming it for what it is. And just the scary, scary side of it. And it's the same with um, your, your psychopath books where you, you go into the areas that academia just was afraid to go into or wasn't allowed to go into as well. So I, I highly recommend it. I'm very impressed. Well, thank you for that, Karen. The storytelling aspect came a long time ago. About 10 years ago, I went to a, a Viking reenactment thing in, in Dublin. And it was like, you know, they were, they were reenacting a Viking kind of like cultural thing in, in the National Museum in the, in, the, in, in the forecourt area. And it was great. It was great fun. And they had like mm-hmm. fellas dressed up as like, you know, Vikings charging at each other and screaming, you know, Odin and stuff like that. And that was fun. But there was like all these little sideshows off the, off the court area. And one of them was a guy pretending to be a Viking storyteller. And he was telling the story of the Viking history of Ireland in that style. And the kids, there was like just a bunch of him and a bunch of kids gathered around a tour fire. And he had the kids absolutely riveted the way he was describing, you know, you know, he, he was saying things like how Brian Baru was his enemy and stuff like that, and he should leave the Dublin Vikings alone. And the kids were amazed, and I was amazed, and so were the adults. And I remember thinking at the time, if I was ever going to write a history book, I wouldn't do it unless it was done in the same style as that man had told the Viking sagas to those kids. Because if you can inspire the look on those kids' faces the way he did, then you're really, really telling history. And so I thought yeah. to myself, well, if I'm going to do that, that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to tell it the way it should be told, not this clinical, analytical in 1542 and 1863 and 1201. Right. None of that crap. None of this sort of like scientific weight and measurement aspect of, of history. It was going to be told as a saga because that's what makes it real. And so that was the idea of Al Porges Night. Now, I'm not the first person to write the occult history of the, of the Third Reich and basically the world, in the, which will be the next yeah. few books since. But however, it's one thing to tell this story as like, well, there was this group called the Third Society and there was this group, this book right. called Brilliant, really, the, Co- the Coming of the Super Race and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. It, it means nothing unless you can sort of throw yourself into the consciousness of people who heard it at that time. And this is why I got the owner bridge, the original version of Mein Kampf, because I said, well, like, well, how did Hitler, how did Hitler do it? How did he actually spellbind these people? And then it dawned on me that he was reading a grimoire. He was, he was delivering a, a, something that resonated deeply with their subconscious, and that was the way right. to do it. So that's, the, I think, one of the ways they teach us I think they teach us history in school in order to kill the meaning of history. And, that's, and I always right. said, that's, I want to undo that. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's the one class that I'm thinking right now my son has the most problem with. He's, and it's what I had the most problem with, because I knew it was a lie. The clinical nature of history will, will hide the horrors. You know, manifest destiny is a, destiny is a, a spit and polish name for genocide. Right. You know, so that's, yeah. that's how they teach history. They don't say, like, well, you know, the native people of, of the United States were wiped out by these crazies who had this idea that they were sent by God to, you know, right. have manifest right. And it was more of men, women, and children but for that reason. No, no, it's, it was just economic expansion as populations grew and the need for more farmland and transportation routes between the east and the west. 
and a kid sees that, but the kid doesn't, you know, no, no Native American died because of the, the, the need to build the Union Pacific Railroad. It, he died right. for a philosophical concept. And, and a crazy one at that, and a psychopathic one at that. Yeah. yeah. And, and it doesn't have anything to do with race either. But if we keep no. looking at race, which doesn't really exist, that's a, that is something made up. But, but if we keep looking at it, then we're not looking at the real story. Yeah. So and that, that's why I don't say religion. I say sectarianism. I know lots of people who have all different religions who are, are decent, good people, and atheists. Oh, sure. The problem is not the, the, the religion. It's the sectarianism, the belief that your way is the only way. I mean, no tolerance for anyone else. And so that and nationalism, which is really just another version of racism, is the biggest right. spell they ever played on us. They, because it robs us of what we are, culture. That's all that exists. I know. Show me, show me one culture that developed a flag. They didn't. Right. They developed everything. The music, art, the history, stories, sagas, tales, mm -hmm. everything. But they didn't develop a nationalist country. They didn't develop bureaucracy. And so right. that's... That's, you know, the ultimate spell of all was bureaucracy. And bureaucracy mm -hmm. became a sort of a, a, a kind of black magic during the 20th century, ending in the Victorian times and moving into the 20th century, not just in Germany, but everywhere. Bureau bureaucracy yeah. became the, the witchcraft of the state. Mm -hmm. Mainly because they didn't have a homeland ever. And this is the danger of creating kooky mythologies and trying to make them true. Because what, there was two aspects to this. The reason why the British imperialist structure wanted to go along with this is because they wanted, they knew that the Middle East was a very strategically important area. This was long before oil now. And uh, they, they knew that, because it's where the three continents meet, Africa, Asia, and uh, Europe. And uh, right down right. there along Palestine, Jordan, all the way down into the Sinai Peninsula. So they had to strategically get in there. And the idea was to create a, an ulster in the Middle East, basically to create sectarian tension in the Middle East. So there would always be a need for a British or an Anglo-Saxon military presence within the Middle East. And, you know, what, what is Iraq, you know? I mean, the United States is basically an extension of the, the British Empire. And so, and Nate and mm -hmm. British troops are there too. And that was what that was all about. It was all about a strategic idea coupled with this weird religious idea. And they were so kooky. For instance, one of the things they believed was that the Irish people were the tribe of Dan from the Bible because of all the name pl place names in Ireland named after Dun this and Dun that, like Dun Leary, Dun Dolph, and all these places, Dun Garvey. Right. And they said that was Dan, but it was, and that comes from the tribe of Danu. Danu was a felt that got again right. kooky ideas leading to leading to misery. Yep, and there, yeah, there's no solution then because then you always have the people who believe it's real, you know, who are in that spell. Yeah, and those there's no there's never a solution to it because it's man-made to begin with. There's not meant to be a solution. No, and the solution is always uh, what's the word? Deliberately counterproductive. Like during the 1930s, when the National Socialists got into power, they, 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 there was something called the Transfer Agreement, where there was sort of like an international Jewish council that represented Jews in Europe. And they were the ones who came up with this idea for uh, emigration to Palestine. And they actually struck a coin. I'm not kidding you. You can find this medallion online. On one side is the Star of David, and on the other side is the swastika. And it was a, a, basically a pact, a covenant between National Socialism and Jews to move Jews into Palestine, but it was always a scam all along because the all, this is the tragedy of it. The, 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 the super rich Jews got out of Germany in time. They all went to England, America, and everyone had money that could actually do it. It was the working class and uh, the poor Jews in, the, in Eastern Europe who would have suffered the brunt because, again, even though they were Jewish, it always comes down to class. The rich ones don't care about the poor yeah. ones. Any more, any more than right. rich Catholics care about poor Catholics, rich Hindus care about poor Hindus. It all just goes on and on. It ultimately came down in the end to class. If you had the money to escape Germany, uh, you were okay. If you didn't, you were screwed. Sling your hook or else. And, and they, they, that's the way it happened in America, too. You know, you, you were told to leave, and then if you didn't, the, the army came and, and moved you from yeah. your homeland. Yeah. You know, and a lot, lot of... Um, uh, inner 
inner um, marriage between Celtics and and people from the Ireland and the UK who had come over here and intermarried with Indians in the um, Appalachian and then the Blue Ridge that to save their lives <laughs> because then their children would have lighter skin and uh, yeah instead of having to go the, the same witchcraft the same witchcraft and that comes from it's interesting like the whole thing of the dark skin thing this happened in Rwanda looks to the Old Testament the, the Demaru the Jim Hoba where one of them, one of the sons of so and so was cast down because he had a darker skin, and this is where racism comes from. The darker skinned people, it comes directly from mm -hmm. the, the, the Jin Jehovah of the Jehovah in the Old Testament, and he came, the idea was the darker skinned ones were lesser within the within the system, and they were cast down. And this this, this reflected itself not only in World War II and the rise of the Aryan idea, but also in Rwanda, where you had the Hutus and the Tutus, and one race killed the other yeah. because one had a flatter nose and one had a pointer nose, and they said the Bible said we right. were white. This is, this is how, this is when we get back, okay, we're getting very deep now, but this is bringing us back yeah. to this, this, this thing, this, this entity, this beast called Jehovah, yeah. this thing in right. the Bible pretending to be God, that the Gnostics and the Cathars warned us about, this is the one who steered up all this crap. This is the one who turned the Middle East into a hellhole. This is the one who infected the Teutonic Knights when they moved into the Middle East to go to war against the Crusades. And I actually believe, we want to bring it to a spiritual level, subliminally brought them into the Middle East for that specific, specific purpose of infecting, infecting Europeans with this Din Jehovah uh, uh, Demarouge, uh, psychic pollution that brought itself back into Europe and eventually became the Prussian royal families, which eventually became every European royal family and eventually led to things like the First World War, which is a, like a bloodbath all over Europe, basically Europeans killing themselves. This is, we're into very deep stuff here now, but ultimately... Yeah. If you were to really go and look at what Valpurgis Night is about, it's a warning that we must be very careful of our spiritual identity in terms of what yeah. we get in. Not saying some is better than the others, but some are incompatible. Right. And I absolutely believe that the monotheistic, the, 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 the Middle Eastern Jehovah, Edenaruz, Yahweh, is not compatible with the rest of the world. It may be compatible with them. I don't know. I'm not, trying, not judging anybody. What happened in the Americas, the Australian Aborigines, Africa, and all the natives, and even India, and everywhere that happened was horrific. But that crap yeah. all happened in Europe first. We have to remember right. that. Yeah. We have constant, you know, we had like Charlemagne slaughtered the Saxons because they were, the last Saxons in around Arkin in Germany, because they refused to convert to Christianity. And that's the story. St. Patrick came to Ireland and destroyed the Irish culture with his, uh, his Henry Kissinger type deal with the Irish chieftains. And the same bloody thing, if you look through history, it happened in India. The British didn't conquer India by force. The, in the British came to India and found basically what was a paradise compared to Europe. It, they found basically there was, no, there was no poverty, there was no uneducated people, there was, every, there, was a standard of, there was a standard of culture far in excess of, of anything in Europe. And again, these things, Jindahoga, uh, Demarouge infected uh, Christian British imperialists, went there and said, how will destroy India as we will, we will infiltrate the, the Rajas, the, the local regional kingdoms, and we'll anglicize them, and then they'll, 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 they'll be just like us, and they'll forget about their people, and they'll bring in class systems and everything like that, and suddenly, you know, it's over and it's done. And that's how the British conquered India. This is, um, I know, I, um, I don't mean to offend Christians or Muslims or, or, or Jews or anyone, you know, I'm not saying that your, your religion is wrong. I'm just saying that there's an infection, there's a psychic infection right. that exists within this, this, this monotheism that has served humanity very, very badly.